Highway 16 is entering the water at his own risk and peril. It was an interesting trip, a lot of preparation to get our equipment ready to go, shipped up there. When we arrived in, on the camp, we were literally growing with, with the camp. We had the first meal, the galley had served. The Arctic environment's changing in a number of ways. One, in these oceanographic conditions, but two, with less uh, ice in there, you're gonna see more commercial shipping, more ambient noise. We wanna understand that. Uh, what, what are the conditions, that, how will our system perform up there? Uh, both in a passive and active sonar systems. We finally got it together around 2300 at night. Uh, again, using headlamps, no heat really in minus 40 degree weather. Headlamps and hand saws underneath the northern lights, it's hard to beat that experience. So what we're looking at doing is trying to figure out the acoustics with the dynamic um, paths, because there's several different um, ocean water sources. We wanted to go out there and take measurements of the ocean do some sound propagation experiments where we would actually send sound from sources to receivers. We deployed two VLAs about three kilometers and about a uh, one and a half kilometers away from camp. So that included drilling holes and restringing the, the, the instruments and deploying them. This is what's called an Expendable Mobile Acoustic Training Target, or EMAT for short. It is what its name says it is. It's expendable, so we can take it drop it in the water and let it go, and we don't have to worry about retrieving it. Uh, the way we used it, it was almost like a flare, if you can imagine that. Uh, we put it in the ocean, and then we tried to track it and see if we could hear it. It's mobile. Uh, it, it can, it's self-propelled. We program it on a, a, a predetermined track um, in terms of course, speed, and depth. What it basically is, it's a mobile boom box. It puts sound out in the water. So what the fleet uses it for is they'll drop it in the, in the ocean, and it's self-propelled and it emits sound. So what the surface ships will do is they'll treat it like it's an actual submarine and try and check it through the ocean. There's no data that, that this uh, device is collecting for us to use. All the data, data we're collecting is on the receivers, which we pulled up and we brought those home. It's one thing to sit here and read books about how sea ice is changing and forming and dynamics about it, but one, another thing is to see it and to walk outside your tent and you're seeing the leads open and sea ice cracking and ridges developing. It's immense amount of knowledge I was able to receive within less than a week, actually. What we're interested from a science perspective is doing things like measuring the ice. We're heading towards that direction. And the way that we're heading in that direction specifically is with the underwater vehicles. So we have two classes of underwater vehicles. One is the Remus 100 vehicle. We have actually three of those that's going up. And then we also have the Aqueous vehicle, and that's right over there, the green vehicle. While operating in high-risk environments, uh, it's tremendously useful to have a platform like this that can just keep an eye on the divers. It can just stay with them, hover next to them, and uh, provide real-time information to the support staff on the surface. First, uh, our Center for Autonomous Vehicle Research is going to be deploying Remus underwater vehicles. The Remus vehicle is a 100-meter rated vehicle, but we're going to keep it fairly shallow. And as it looks upwards, it's creating a map of the under ice. And what we want to be able to do is create that map, see what it looks like, but then also be able to navigate relative to that map. And why that's important is that what we want to be able to do eventually is be able to navigate accurately without GPS. Knowing where you are in the global frame, so like a GPS coordinate, becomes a lot less important than knowing where you are relative to what you're studying. So whether that's a submarine with which you want to dock or divers which you want to follow, that relative information becomes a lot more important, which is a complete shift from how we've been thinking about AUV missions. That's actually one of the big challenges for us in, up in the Arctic. We are deploying from an ice flow, and, which means we drill a hole in the ice, we deploy the vehicles, and we go and run a mission. But as we're running a mission, the hole moves. And so it's moving to a different location. So when we come back, we have to come back to a different spot. The polar ice cap presents a unique challenge for submarines. The communications and navigation are different than operating in the at-sea environment. The Navy's Arctic Submarine Laboratory is responsible for developing and maintaining expertise in Arctic-specific skills, knowledge, equipment, and procedures. 
to enable the submarine force to safely and effectively operate in the unique Arctic Ocean environment. We're trying to look for thicker ice, uh, multi-year ice, surrounded by thinner, uh, flatter ice, which is first-year ice, and that'll be able to support a runway to get our personnel and equipment onto the ice. The Arctic Submarine Laboratory serves as the lead organization for coordinating, planning, and executing naval ice exercises. ISEX 2016 involved four nations and over 200 participants over the five weeks of operations. So the ISEX program is designed to assess the submarine force's operational readiness in the Arctic environment. The camp's namesake is from the USS Sargo, the second nuclear submarine to surface at the North Pole on February 9, 1960. The Naval Postgraduate School's participation in ISEX presents a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to perform extremely challenging field experiments in an operationally relevant environment. The opportunity to go out in the field and conduct relevant research um, with real hardware is, is an incredible opportunity to um, bring that expertise back and share it with other students here on campus and throughout the Navy.